This is the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. For you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If you want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with His angels in the glory of His Father, and then He will repay everyone for what He has done. Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in His kingdom. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. There's always something bittersweet to me about these waning days of summer in late August. And this 2020 summer of the coronavirus surely is no different. On the one hand, as we move toward Labor Day weekend, it can be a time for relaxing fun and family gatherings, as well as an annual tribute to the works and contributions of laborers to the development and achievement of our country. On the other hand, it's the unofficial end of summer, reminding us that the days are growing shorter and the shadows of the sundials are growing longer. Tonight, the sun sets at 8.20 p.m., and we're losing about three minutes of sunlight each day. The antidote to my personal grief as our immense pandemic summer gives way to back-to-school chaos and a pandetic, pandemic autumn is a poem by Rainer Maria Rilke. I offer you this poem entitled Autumn Days as a kind of prayer for us all. Lord, it is time. The summer was immense. Lay your shadow on the sundials and let loose the wind in the fields. Bid the last fruits to be full. Give them another two more southerly days. Press them to ripeness and chase the last sweetness into heavy wine. Whoever has no house now will not build one. Whoever is alone now will remain so for a long time. We'll stay up, read, write long letters, and wander the avenues up and down restlessly while the leaves are still blowing. Those last two lines of Rilke's poem are so striking to me. We wander the avenues up and down restlessly while the leaves are blowing. Restless we are. Restless as individuals, as a community, as a nation. Restless from social distancing and masking up. Restless for a vaccine and for an end to the violence of racial injustice. Restless wondering whether our health will be more secure again and whether our country will move toward fulfilling its own ideals. Restlessly wondering when we'll ever be free to be in the same room with one another. Restless with no clear path forward or back. Wandering the avenues up and down. St. Augustine of Hippo is regarded by many as one of the most extraordinary minds that the Christian tradition has yet witnessed. And probably the single most famous, most often quoted line he ever wrote is found at the outset of his confessions. 
an autobiographical work written in Latin around the year 400. Speaking to God, and all 13 books of the Confessions are addressed to God, he wrote these words. You made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless until they rest in thee. And doesn't that get right to the heart of what it is to be a human being? One of my favorite seminary professors, a brilliant man named Michael Himes, once said that if he were to choose a single characteristic to describe human life, he would pick restlessness. Which is to say, have you ever found a dog that wanted to be a cat? Have you ever found a cow that wanted to be a tree? But have you ever known a human being who didn't want to be more, to do more, to have more, to feel more? Every human being is fundamentally restless. We are restless and dissatisfied. We are always hungry. At the center of our being is an endlessly nagging sense of yes, 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 but more. <laughs> There's rarely a moment when we stop and rest. Rarely a moment when we rest fully and completely. And that feels ever more the case to me during these waning summer days of 2020. Yet, far from being an evil, far from having to think that we must still the restlessness at the core of our being to let it simmer down so that finally we are at peace, Augustine came to realize just the opposite. Augustine came to realize that we must stay restless. We must stoke our restlessness. Our restlessness is one of the best things about us. Why? Because our restlessness is what drives us to God, ultimately and at last, if we are faithful to it. You made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless until they rest in thee, wrote Augustine in the first chapter of his Confessions. It was Augustine's restless heart that led him to God. And dare we trust that that might be the case for us too, if we are faithful to it. What Augustine wrote in the year 400 about restlessness is not unlike what we hear Jesus say in Matthew's Gospel today about the cross. We hear in Matthew's Gospel that Jesus told his disciples, if you want to become my followers, then deny yourselves and take up your cross and follow me. For those who want to save their lives will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. Wow. Wow, it was not an easy lesson for Peter and the disciples. It was counterintuitive, it was wrongheaded. It turned their thinking upside down. Last week, you may recall, we heard about Peter thinking that he got it all right when he replied to Jesus' a question, but who do you say that I am? With the reply, you are the Messiah, the Savior, the Son of the living God. You are right, Jesus told Peter. But then Peter quickly demonstrated that he had no right idea, no comprehension of what his lightning fast insight really meant. Following Jesus demands a new way of thinking. It did for his disciples then, and it does for us now. Following Jesus requires a new way of thinking that goes against convention, conventional, culturally appreciated thought forms. This new way of thinking means understanding that our restlessness is not a curse, but perhaps even a blessing, because it leads us to God. This new way of thinking emphasizes the doing of God's will no matter what the consequences are. 
This new way of thinking means taking up our crosses, not in order to be victims, but because it will be a path of transformation for ourselves and others. Take up your cross, Matthew has Jesus say in today's gospel. I don't honestly know that if we could hear Jesus speaking to us at this moment, at this time during this pandemic summer of 2020, as he did to his disciples so many years ago, whether he would consider the restlessness of these coronavirus racially injustice fueled days as something that we should take up and embrace as if they were crosses to bear. But I do know this truth about Jesus and Christianity and life. No one escapes the cross. You probably have little idea or awareness of the crosses that people in your life around you right now are bearing. Maybe you do. Maybe you're bearing one or more right now. Relationship stress or addiction, COVID or cancer, death of loved ones, depression, or fear of your own death. This past week, I found myself sitting next to the waters of Lake Michigan, thinking of all the situations of people I know or barely know in my life, the crosses that they, that you are bearing. And I was thinking of how foolish I can sometimes be by imagining that we could all live simple, untroubled, restless, free lives. Why would I or any of you ever imagine that? The cross looms large in every life, just like restlessness. It's fundamental to what it is to be a human being. The question is how to understand and what to do with it. When Jesus asks his disciples to take up the cross, when he asks us to take up the cross, he is not asking us to pretend or make believe or to live narrow, protected lives as if we were some sort of martyrs or to let other people victimize us. To take up your cross and embrace it is to face life as it truly is, to be open to whatever life brings, knowing that it will sometimes be enormously painful and to undergo the suffering. That is the deep wisdom of the symbol of the cross in the Christian tradition. Death is overcome by dying. The only way in which death can be overcome is by undergoing it and embracing it within something bigger and more powerful than it. The suffering that we experience through our own lives and the lives of people around us is overcome by its embrace. And what happens when we embrace it? What happens is life, abundant and full. It's one of the most often quoted lines in all of the Gospels, as we heard today in Matthew's Gospel. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it, Jesus says. In another translation, it says, and those who take up their cross and lose their life will see it become everlasting life. It is for the cross that our hearts are restless in Augustine's language. The cross is the symbol of our desire to give ourselves away in love and life. It is our hunger finally and fully to hand ourselves over, to give ourselves to others, because it is in doing so that we are truly who we are. Lord, it was an immense summer. Lay your shadow on the sundials and let loose the wind in the fields. Bid the last fruits to be full. As we wander the avenues up and down during these waning days of summer, while the leaves are still blowing, may we be faithful 
to our restlessness. May the hunger, the restlessness, drive us on to take up our crosses, to give ourselves away and see it become everlasting life. You made us for yourself and our hearts are restless until they rest in thee. Amen.